Welcome to the Too Much Dip Podcast. My name is Dave, I'm a host. Joining me in studio, wearing an out-of-office hat that can be purchased at washedmedia.shop. It's Dylan Shivery. Don't forget this dope Roback light, extreme lightweight hoodie I'm wearing. I like washed, that. Washed 20. Uh, but this is not why we're here. Talk about my attire, David. Uh, the sports are great right now. Mm-hmm. The air is cooler. The humidity is lifted. The vibes are strong. It's uh, simply the best time of year. It's simply the best. Better than all the rest. Do you understand what I'm saying? Who is that? Who's doing I don't that? Fucking know Wilson Phillips. I don't you know, look it up. You got Spotify and shit. Okay. It's not Wilson Phillips. Is it? Uh, here's a guy who should be Googling that. Randy Trembacki producing. Hi, Dave. The Bears won. I didn't watch okay. any of it. Okay. Spoiler. Yeah, well, we had a whole Bears segment coming up. It's oh, Tina Turner, man. and that's so disrespectful by me to Wilson Phillips. Come on. It's all right, man. Rest in peace, Tina Turner. Yeah. A great one. KJ. <laughs> I'm uh, elated to be here. Uh, I'm very happy that we stumbled into uh, Tina Turner talk uh, as it disengaged my brain from the humidity is lifted being a fully accepted thing that was said. And it just made my brain just melt. I'm like, wait, this might be accurate, but I've never heard a human being say this before. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong um, with that? No, I think it's correct. It just. It's fine. It moved I, out. I don't know. The lifted part made me think of like marine layer. I don't know. And if I was it, like, wait, you know what? He probably has a point. He's just trying to say it's more crisp. I don't know if it technically like went up, like lifted up into the clouds. It just, it a noticeable decrease in humidity once that like mini front blew through Austin the other day. Don't get used to it. Yes. This is a fake fall, but it'll I think, be here. I think the humidity has gone for the year. Buddy. I got some news for you. I know it's going to get warm again, but I think it it's going to feel better. Okay. We'll see. I'm going to be watching that dew point. We'll see if you're wet or not. All right. I'll let you know when I get when I get wet. You dry right now? Currently. I hate when my skin gets dry. It's the worst. Something that happens. Another thing, a guy asked a question, things about getting older. You really got to keep that skin moisturized. It's great for aging or anti-aging, I should say. <clears throat> What, KJ? You're going to make a Jack and joke? Go ahead. No, not at all. I was actually just, uh, again, appreciating your professional cadence. And initially I was like, wait, are we about to just launch into a Neutrogena ad? Because uh, it was just a well, well said personal endorsement for non ashy skin. I respect it. A Neutrogena sponsor a- would go hard. <laughs> I agree. It would go soft, actually. Give me that or just. Uh, a regular fucking delivery of, of salt water softener salt. So you don't have to fuck with all this hard water up here in the Midwest. Do you have one of those? Oh, yes. It's the biggest point of ignorance that I have in my household. Nothing makes me feel like I know nothing at all than fucking with a water softener. Yeah, what? what's the upkeep there? Do you have to do anything with it? Is it- like... Monthly dump a bag of ice or a bag of ice, bag of salt in it. But it seems like it should be more complex than that. I'm so like everybody has said, that's all you got to do. Make sure there's no salt dam. But anyways, nobody cares about this shit. There's somebody in the Midwest being like, what an idiot. Randy, do you have one? Uh, I am. I, I'm not sure. I know that we had to <laughs> mess around with uh, the sump pump in the basement. Have you had to do anything with that yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two pump, some pump. Uh, okay. We got one of those. It's running well. That's good. It's That's running good. real well. That's great. That's great. It's wonderful. Okay. Uh, any Anything from the weekend you'd like to share? Anybody? I know Dylan didn't do shit. I didn't really do shit. Randy. Uh, I don't know. Your boy hit up pancakes and planes at a local small airport. I'm here to report. This is a dope-ass event. Like, I'm not all about uh, your little two-seater Harrison Ford. 
probably going to end a life little planes. Yeah. He's crashed a number of times. But uh, it is pretty cool to just be like, hey, there are a constant stream of just old people landing little airplanes in this grass field next to me every 30, 40 minutes. And people are pretty chill about it. Oh, and by the way, you get like above average breakfast over there and there's a bounce house. Like it was a dope little Saturday. So oh. go seek out your uh, local airports, planes and pancakes events or whatever. Uh, we'll awesome. look into that. I'm sure there's one here. <laughs> there probably is, but there's no reason in like a real metropolitan area that you would like have to go to that <laughs> sort of event here. You kind of got to work with what you got. <laughs> well, <laughs> The Austin airport has a significant um, food advantage. We've got we've got a good array of uh, dining establishments inside. Oh, well, yeah, this is not our real airport. This is like a neighborhood runway. Like people's backyards have like hangars attached to it. It's like a, there's a similar one down in Midlothian. Interesting. Um, where it's like just a runway and then people kind of have their own personally owned hangars and there's one in Lake Wales. KJ, man, what's yeah, uh that is that is on point. What's the damage on this neighborhood, man? Just kind of okay. got your own. I, I didn't don't know you had it like hanger. that. Interesting. <laughs> this dude. is not in my neighborhood. <laughs> okay. KJ just hanging out with the pri- the PJs. <laughs> Little Cessnas. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, like Dylan said, did you tell him to use the code on that rollback? Washed 20. Washed to zero. 20% off. That's the right side. There you go. There you go. You got yours too. Oh, shit. KJ, did you know, you don't know this. I'm about to break some news to you. Did you know rollback sent um, an SMU hoodie to Will? It was a medium. (laughs) And uh, it went to Will's old address. And it's now in my car because it's mine now. And it's fucking sick. It's a sick hoodie. Hey, shouts to Roback. Wonderful people. Uh, Wash 20, as the good gentleman said. I won't comment directly on what I was just informed of. You could try it. As, uh, I'll cry in the car at another date. You could try it. I'll send it up to you. You think you can work a medium? Uh, no. <laughs> I would not want to uh, embarrass the good name of Roback in a medium. Uh, I, I could F with an L. But uh, yeah, medium ain't happening. You could like, F with I would an L. look like early two thousands Under Armour. Well, you know what I mean. I shouldn't even go there. Under early two thousands performance wear is what it would look like on me. Got it. <laughs> you could say Under Armour. Fair. I'll tell you, someone who F with an L suit. Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We're, we're playing next. week. I feel like we should set some lines here. Like Randy's got to embrace being Purdue and bears fan and like own some of the losses as there are many or oh, no. you, cannot, you can't fan dip now. your toe in. He's a Texas fan. now. he's been to a game then already. He's be whoa. All in. whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have to be very much of a Purdue fan and a sports fan to talk shit about Notre Dame. Yeah, <laughs> true. Come on. I'm a true, confirmed Catholic. True. I can do it all I want. Sure. I mean, that's how that works. Same. <laughs> as they're known to do but uh there's so much to talk about um we could start there i mean that's that's kind of one of many huge stories on the weekend maybe the biggest upset was i think for college it's got to be number one yeah definitely nothing pulls people together like watching notre dame get upset on national television can i tell you something I don't harbor the Notre Dame ill will that many, many, many people in this country do. I don't hate them like most people hate Notre Dame, but I certainly don't want to see them win. But yeah, you're right. Notre Dame is just widely hated. By- I, I like Marcus Freeman a lot. And um, that was embarrassing. Northern Illinois. Got him. Which makes the... Um, Lot the Texas mm. A&M loss to Notre Dame look even worse than it already did. Transitive property, which I don't hate personally. Um, just SEC. Thomas Hammock, the head coach for Northern Illinois, just stole the hearts of America on the field. His post game interview eh. just in, moved to tears. I was I was watching that. I was I looked over to Chelsea. I said, "That's the kind of guy." I want to play for someone who cares that much, you know, oh, just overcome with emotion on the field 
I was very happy. He seems like a super likable man, and that's that's the only impression of him that I have. But very happy for him and his team. Um, yeah, I, I, the Marcus Freeman part's the hard part of this. If you would have asked me when Bill, not Bill, Brian Kelly was their coach, Brady Hoke or any other Notre Dame coach, like I would have gladly been like, hmm, F him. What did I care about Jeff Smarge to Brady Quinn's hot as fuck, but I don't want to see him win. Like I didn't hate them, but I was happy to see them lose. Is it the independent thing? Makes any sense. Is it they're like they're too they're too good for you know conference? It's that and they've they just affiliation. They're they are the team where they will always get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. They always do. And and in the NBC thing, they, you know, that is it. The, mm -hmm. yeah. the NBC thing. They kind of, the, you have your own network and you're calling yeah. your own shots thing. Like that yeah. was, I think the thing, like the same thing that people griped about Longhorn network that made some people hate Texas mm -hmm. unnecessarily just yeah, because they had this deal. That was like an, an elected add on to your cable plan. NBC is NBC. Like, yeah. You, they like agree. force it. They force you to watch their, their product and no one really cared that much. <coughs> Outside of Notre Dame fans. Yeah, I I would be lying. I didn't watch much of this game until like the end when I realized what was going to happen. I was like, oh, I got to see. I, was this just uh, a team just underperforming so much so like that was reading enough of their you know newspaper clippings? What is it? Uh, eating the cheese, as Bill Parcells once said. Like, look how great you are. You went to college right. station and won a game. Literally no one has ever done that. You went to Kyle Field. <laughs> You won a game, <laughs> and then you do that. Like, this is just NIU playing up, like, a perfect, a near-perfect game, and Notre Dame just laying a turd. They laid a turd, 16-14. Mm. Wasn't an ass-whooping by any means. Uh, did, did Northern Illinois sneak into the top 25? That's what I, is that what I'm seeing here? They are 25th in the AP poll, which – Wow. Um, Calm down. I've okay. got – I mean, I'll say the same thing over and over and over anytime we talk about rankings, but whatever. I, I do think that you beat the number five team at their house. You deserve to be ranked if you're out of the top 25. You absolutely have earned your way into the rankings. Quarterback Riley Leonard. Um, Sorry, I thought you were done there. Yeah. 20 of 32, 163 yards, two interceptions. Mm. Not a strong performance. He played poorly. Their D line is probably the biggest uh, problem here. No, uh, Northern Illinois converted. I don't know what the percentage is. Like seventy percent of their third downs. Um, their running back had like hundred yards receiving and rushing. They played a smart, conservative game against a better team, but they were built to control the ball. And once they got a couple turnovers and blocked a couple field goals, like once they had those minor advantages to level the playing field. Like Notre Dame had some weird things happen. They were playing control the ball enough and did not make mistakes. And they won the game. It's well, well coached. Um, we'll still, we'll still see Notre Dame in the playoff. I'm just going to win out. I got to beat USC at the end, end of the season. They'll be in. Their schedule is very weak. It's very weak. And now we got NIU's ranked. You know, I don't know what the rest of their schedule looks like. You know, it's like, I, I mean, look, NIU wasn't that bad of a team. They can't afford to stumble again, though. One more loss. Uh, Notre Dame catches Louisville. Okay. Uh, Georgia Tech took an L this weekend. Florida State, we know that story. And then, like you said, USC late in the year. As somebody who has tickets and plans to go attend the Florida State game, this one hurt. <laughs> they will make the playoff. They'll lose again. Probably to USC. They'll lose again. Yeah, I don't know how they factor in to like the at-large bids and like what their ranking looks like, but they would be going into that USC week if we assume they went out 11-1, and one, and they're only 18th right now. Just due to attrition, that puts them back towards the top 10. And they, they drop that game to USC. Let's say USC is half decent. Like, are you going to put a 10-2 number 10 that loses to a highly ranked USC team, like how far are you going to drop them? Like they have a shot. I just don't know what their independent status is when it comes to the 12 team. Yeah. Still funny to me that they they can never have uh, a first round buy in the playoffs because they will never win a conference championship. 
Oh, oh that is their yeah, punishment? Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Texas looks the part, huh? Texas looked good, man. Um, I was pretty confident in this game going in. Um, I thought it would be – I mean, it was over at halftime. It was 24-3. to 3. Quinn Ewers had 200 yards passing. In the first half alone, um, kind of took the foot off the gas – uh, in the second half a little bit. Uh, but that was, that was a, a very strong performance and a tough place to play against the national champions. And I understand that they're not the same Michigan team that they were last year, but that's still quite a game. They The game was, was over early. Yeah. Um, Texas just looked better in every aspect. Yours – has improved tremendously in like maneuvering in the pocket, which was kind of the the rub on him last year is that he would get flushed and he would, you know, scramble out of the pocket and throw it away or whatever. And he's he's working the pocket. He's stepping up. That first touchdown he threw to tight end Gunnar Helm was a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um he had the pocket started to collapse and he he moved up in it. That was a pro move. It was. I was watching that, and I was like, oh, yeah. okay, he's definitely gotten better. He's seeing the field better. He's going through his progressions, and he, he looks he looks really sharp. I think Sark called a tremendous game, too. Kind of took the, um, the the two All-American defensive tackles out of, out of the game by kind of going sideline to sideline, and then they would they take them out of the game, and he would run it up the middle, and it was it was a beautiful game. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. Texas doesn't have much uh, in the way until Oklahoma and then Georgia in October. So I fully expect them to be undefeated going to the OU game. Um, and before last week, I would say that that was going to be a close – it's still it's probably going to be a close game. when these th th those, those games are always just weird. But OU does not look good. Any other thoughts on Texas-Michigan? KJ? No, I, I think it's um, – I think yours is a good testament to – you see a number one overall quarterback signed, go to a school, it not work out, have like some flashes of success, but you don't see that full validation of like, yeah, he was that dude for a reason. Like Caleb Williams is another good example. Like he was a number one unquestionably like recruit in the nation but maybe they don't get that consistent hype like a Trevor Lawrence or a Justin Fields because they were like, I know Justin Fields transfer, but one program consistently um, and then kind of showed it over time. So it's really awesome to see like yours now. You're like, oh, yeah, there's a reason when he was coming out of South Lake, people knew this was your first high schooler with like NIL money committed to him and like graduated yeah. early to go get that bag. Like there was a reason he's been that guy for a while and it's cool to see at the next level. He had a throw in the second quarter. It was their second touchdown or maybe their third touchdown uh, to Matthew Golden in the corner where it was designed like rollout play. And he just, he put it in this small little window in the corner and he just zipped it in there, like throwing kind of across his body. And it was super impressive. I was like, okay, that's a, that's a first round throw. So um, yeah, I like I like what I'm seeing so far from Quinn Ewers. Looking at Texas's schedule, and you're right, uh, Mississippi State rolling out there with uh, former Baylor great Blake Shapin, who's actually not bad out there, but I, that's not a very good team. Then OU, Georgia, Vanderbilt. Okay, maybe more competitive than you thought before the season, mm -hmm. but not. I will say, I'm not just saying this because of a name. I watched. I've, I'm now an Arkansas guy. Okay, I have two weeks into this, and it's not fun. I will say it's Why not a that? fun. It's not a fun time. They will fuck around and <laughs> they'll give a, ge a game away about three different ways in two quarters. It's insane. But Taylor Green's got something, and some of what he's got is inexplicable turnover. But other things that he's got is like he can make plays. That gives me – I would say that could be a fun game. That could be like a shootout game. That's at, that's in Fayetteville. That would be a fun game to go to. I've always wanted to go to Fayetteville. Um, Is it early November? Yeah, November 16th. Yeah, it's a morning game. So. Got it. I feel like on this very show last week we talked about the prospect of 
I think Dylan said you should go in reference to a game in Arkansas. And you're like, absolutely not. <laughs> I've changed my we'll mind. We'll have to have somebody go back and check, but for I've some reason it stood out my head. <laughs> Look, I watch I watched Arkansas go into Stillwater and absolutely outplay a very overrated Oklahoma State team that really just uh, they don't Ollie, what's his name? Uh, Ollie Gordon. Ollie Gordon. Mm-hmm. Ollie Gordon did not have a good game at all. Didn't do anything. Alan Bowman, extremely ordinary. And Arkansas just repeatedly turned the ball over. Oklahoma State cannot stop the run. Uh, Jaquin and Jackson, the transfer from Utah, ran all over them. Um, it, it was a sight to be seen. But Arkansas is fun if you don't have an emotional commitment to them. <laughs> And meanwhile, like people who know I'm rooting for them, like our friend, friends of the show are like texting, like, you know, this is like every season we do this. This is what we do. And that is just not a fun place to be. Shout out to hashtag Chad and his uh, heart mm. rate on Saturdays. <laughs> he just sent me like, I want to die. I believe was the text <laughs> I got. <laughs> that is a wild ride, dude. That is a wild ride. But the pokes survive. Um can I talk a little bit about the Big 12? I watched a significant amount of Big 12 ball. Please do, because I feel like I hear a lot about them, and I watched one of their members uh, in a frustrating game Friday that we didn't have to talk about, but yes, go on. Who is Friday? Uh, Jerry uh, Bohannon's team, the BYU Cougars. Mm, okay. Suffolk, suffocating SMU. And the is Red Jerry Zone. Bohannon their quarterback? Backup quarterback. Oh, man. Former Baylor great. Well, speaking of, I watched Baylor, Utah. Baylor is like a 14 and a half dog um, on the road. And Utah with Cam Rising is, they should win the Big 12 and it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, He did get hurt. He may have got pushed out of bounds. And like, I don't know what the actual injury was. It was a finger thing. I don't think he'll be out very long, but yeah, it sounded weird, worded poorly. Um, But Utah's, Utah's a very good team, a very good program. Um, their defense is very good. They made Baylor look really, really ordinary. Um, Baylor has a good team outside of their quarterback, which is a problem because you want a good quarterback. Now, you may say, why don't they just uh, go with the backup, um, who may or may not be related to a friend of the show? Well, the reason is is because I think they gave pretty much all of their NIL money to this kid who transferred in from uh, Toledo. Um, Daquan Finn, and he's not, he does not appear to be a good quarterback at all. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with this highlights at Toledo. He is a sick athlete. He cannot throw the ball and he does not fit that offense. And you're watching it and there's a, and the Baylor, they were down like 23, nothing came back, made it like 23, 12 or something. And you're watching it. You're like, there's a chance they come back in this game and they should, and they should go to the backup Sawyer Robinson, Robertson, who's, Transferred in from Mississippi State, who's a more traditional pro style offense guy, but he can he can throw the ball really well. And they didn't. And you're just like, oh, they gave all this kid, they gave this kid all the money. So they're gonna give him like all the chances in the world to make it right. But they're in trouble. And it's because of the quarterback situation. Um, and that's just not a fun place to be for a team. But uh Big 12 is gonna be sneaky fun. You sneaky think going fun. into uh well, I guess the third quarter, but still, well, this damn's what he ended the game with. Uh, late in the third, he had a 47-yard touchdown pass uh, to the tight end, which brought his numbers up that day to 115 yards passing and one touchdown. So he had 70 yards passing at that point or less and then added a few afterwards. Yeah. Nine of 21 on the day. That's tough. That's not going to really get Oof. it done. But I, I do sneaky pull for Utah because of Cam Rising. Um, I just think, man, you've been at it for so long. Like I'd, lo- I'd like to see you get a shot at the playoffs. Um, you want to talk uh, – there's another Big 12 school that uh, didn't fare so well. Elementary school, school kid out there who's no idea what college football is like without Cam Rising. Uh, <laughs> playing in college football. That's, that is absolutely true. Are you referencing Colorado, David? Yeah. I thought we were going to go Tech, but Colorado works too. Uh, you know, I didn't want to hurt. I, look, Tech's struggling, man. They're, That's they're all we got to say. They're in That's trouble. all that they should say. Tech's I feel already- like I've taken the Dylan seat this year. I feel like Dylan in the past was more aggrieved by Tech fans, and now he's kind of uh, impermeable. 
as due to the position that Texas Man, is in. I have I have to be honest. Not having Tech in the in the same conference as the team I pull for has been uh, fun. It's been uh, that, a weight off my back. I and now I don't I don't really care that much anymore about Tech, and I don't I don't pay them much mind, and it's kind of nice. That's the thing. They're not in the conference of the team I root for either, but for some reason they're obsessed with talking about the conference affiliation of the team I root for. But anywho. Yeah, I, uh, I follow that, KJ. Every time yeah, I see. let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Colorado. Got yeah, worked. Colorado. Got worked by Nebraska. Uh, can I talk about the quarterback for a second, Dylan Rayola? Please. Yes, yeah, so let's do Nebraska part first. True freshman, five-star quarterback. He looks to be pretty damn good. Matt Rule got a good quarterback. I'm sure he's going to develop him into quite a player. But, man, his uh, – his, his cosplay of Patrick Mahomes is is really something else. At what point is that weird? It, it's it's we're there because like you know he's, you know the story like he's boy he's somehow boys with Mahomes or like there's a relationship there already. He, he wears his number. He wears the same sunglasses, has the same haircut and the same facial hair. He does the same pregame routine. He carries himself the same way. It's kind of creepy. It's a little much for my taste. The kid's a baller. Appears to be a baller. He's, he's a good player. He's a good player, and he whipped Colorado, and I appreciate him for that. It's a little weird for me. Um, as far as the relationship goes, I'm sure he's had access. Like his his dad played for the Lions for quite some time. Uh, Dominic Riola's uncle, Donovan Riola, uh, I believe. Maybe not Hall of Famer, but also played in the league as well. Um, and is why he ended up at Nebraska. And then John Kitna was his like high school coach for a bit. So like, I'm sure being able to connect with somebody in the league of that star level was probably not hard to uh, attain. Um, I didn't watch too much of the second half on this. I think I tuned out when it was 28, nothing at half or maybe 28, three, but for it to have ended 28, 10, I do hope and expect that it was a similar case to Texas and Michigan you know, Texas kept scoring. Um, they took out everybody, but they kept putting up points that like Nebraska kind of pulled their foot off the gas. If in fact, like they kept playing a regular game, um, that will be the small ounce of like credit to Colorado's defense for like keeping this from being like the absolute embarrassment that it could have been on the scoreboard. It was likely that they pulled off the gas and that Matt Rule, like, I think has a level of respect for Dion. Um, didn't want to make it as ugly as it could have been. So if that's the case, great. Did you see the clip of their ready room? A lot of teams have, like, hyped up their tunnel situations over the years. But Nebraska has, like, a specific room. Like, they do their prayer. They do their breakout. And then they, like, go into their ready room on the way to the tunnel. Did y'all see any of this? I did not. No. Full blown sensory overload, dark lights, loud purge siren, flashing lights everywhere, words on the wall. Like imagine any like nineties action film when they're like trying to make a murderer and they like shove like a VR headset on somebody and they like show them all the violence or whatever. Not a lot of violent images, but it is pretty aggressive to which I'm like, there has to have been like a sports psychologist been like, yeah, Hey, this is what you shouldn't do, but you could. And they're like, fuck yes, amp it up. And I need it to looks see this. Kind of dope. There's no epileptic <laughs> kids on the uh, in the locker room. They asked him to step out before they put the show. Okay, like, hey, man, this, this could get <laughs> this could get dicey for you, my man. <laughs> it's like as if you shoved like the Apple VR headset on somebody and sat them two feet from like the WWE intro screen, and DX was about to come out, and it's just like boom, 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 lights and pyrotechnics and shit going off, and they're like, all right, go ahead, play a football game. It's time to play Follow the, the game. Rules. <laughs> try try not to hurt anybody or yourself. That was just wild to see. Um, but then there's Colorado's offense. <laughs> hey, shout out to the Cornhuskers, dude. That's a sick game day atmosphere. That was that yeah. was pretty insane. Like I was like, you know what? I'm never gonna go to a game there, but maybe I'll go to a bar that's like also a stadium with a big screen that we talked about. What's it called? Come? Cosm. Cosm. <laughs> Com calms me. Cosm. That would be a fun game to watch at Cosm. For Texas Live, year one. I feel like that's what they were going for was whatever Cosm is. 
But anyhow, I want to know what Cosm looks like when there's like commercial breaks or fucking infomercials rolling. Um, we could go to the Nebraska game. We've got a uh, close friend with, with tickets. We could make that happen. Um, you could just fly. How in. much do we want to talk Colorado offense? Uh, the O-line is still really bad, as uh, Shadur reminded the world um, in his post-game press conference. Conference. Uh, yeah. Did the, you get a? Were you bothered by the way he phrased that? Absolutely. I, I, talk, I, I was telling David about it earlier. Yeah. Can you give me the actual quote? <sighs> Sorry, put you on I, the spot. I, I just I want to make sure. I watched the video. I didn't. I didn't I'm read it, but so, I watched the video. Someone of it. basically asked asked Shador like about you know he he was sacked a few times I believe and kind of running for his life like he does every game. And I don't think up to this point. His father certainly has thrown the O line under the bus. We know that that, that storyline last year. I don't think he's done it though, up to this point. But he said, basically, it was like, did y'all, did you see anyone touch Rayola? Meaning, like, he had a clean pocket. I didn't. And it's just it in, indirectly throws his O line under the bus. He could have, he probably could have been nastier with his wording. Obviously, yeah. Well, it was. Like the back and forth that occurred, like he's, it was one of those where like, it would have been smart not to go there. And he, I don't want to say got baited, but like, it was one of those answers where there was no like professional way to give that answer because the person answer asking the question was trying to get at like on fourth and one, why do they keep putting the ball in your hands and throwing the ball? And I think at some point they didn't say that outright, but they're, they referenced the fourth and one and the failures there. And at some point prior to that had compared it to like Nebraska's short yardage decision-making. And I think that's when he said to Raiola's name and asked him about that. And then there was another back and forth and it wasn't contentious. Like it never seemed, wait, this is aggressive or he was upset. Like he was trying to like answer the question. I'm not trying to defend Shador here in this situation, but it came off more of like his final statement was, I feel confident, and I don't know if he's speaking on behalf of the team himself or offense or whatever, the best chance that we have with what we can do is with me throwing in those situations. Because they were like, why are you coming out and shotgun and fourth and one two or three times and then throwing the ball instead of like lining up and running it? And he, he's like, I feel like if we're going to go down, we want to go down swinging and I throw the best punch. So it was one of those weird things where I didn't agree that he was like throwing them under the bus as much but he certainly landed it back in the area of I'm our best chance. Okay. Cause you know, just that quote, I'm like, is he about to talk his way out of the first round or, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, not just that quote, but like if he, if he, if he has already, if he's in college and he's already throwing teammates under the bus like that, like if that became like a thing that he did, that would not, that would not go well on draft day. And he did, he is like a legit first round prospect. Right. So I don't know. It, it sucks. Cause like I do, as much as I really have a lot of issues with Dion, like I don't really hate his sons. Like I, you know what I mean? Like I don't root against them. Yeah. Like I would like them to just go on, go on and do their own thing and be successful. I did see one, uh, Shiloh had uh forearm surgery. I did see that. I think, I think he may have broken his arm. Oh damn! Non yeah. non jacking one though. Okay. Good for him. Okay. How, how do you know that? What? <laughs> <laughs> you got some insider knowledge there, KJ. <laughs> Don't timestamp me. So <laughs> to add on to the clown show that is Colorado football, there's a mm. report from uh, the Denver. What is it? Denver Compost. Nugget Denver Express. Sports. Uh, wow. One hundred four point three. The fan. Um. Article here by Jake Shapiro, and according to him, Deion Sanders has requested that when his son scores a touchdown, he has asked that the band does not play the fight song, and in lieu of that, they play uh, a, a little a, a part of uh, Shador's rap song called Perfect Timing on the okay. stadium speakers instead. Okay. It's a signature song. And then uh, I just, I just, okay. I, I, I hate him as a coach. I my, hate him my, as a coach. I'm, well, my question is, is a slap? I don't know. I haven't listened to it. <laughs> like I have, I don't, I don't know. 
I, w- I would not agree with anybody like outright changing. I don't know. I feel like you've got to give coaches control of some traditions at the game day experience, but I feel like there's ones at most schools that you just don't fuck with. And like, what is it? Uh, we just saw this last week. I don't think we talked about as much, but Norvell and the band had like athletic department and the band put out statements because people have been complaining that Florida state no longer plays the Tomahawk chop chop war chant song on third downs, every single third down. Um, like the football department reached out to the band and like, Hey, can we just cut that back a little bit? Maybe do it at this point in this point, but maybe not every single third down. Um, and they obliged and people were all up in arms about it. Like fair and suck. At least let us do this absurd celebration. Uh, and with this, I don't, I can't get behind it. The only like even trying to play devil's advocate thought I could come up with is like, it'd be kind of dope if we had like a walk up song type approach, but like play that when he's, or the offense is taking the field, not after the touchdown. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you want to do something that's like monumentous for a person or a player, I feel like you could do it at a different time. Not at the, not after a touchdown. Yeah. That that's just, that's, and that's a thing that doesn't look good when you're losing. (laughs) Sure. It really does not look good. You don't want that to become like a thing. It's like, oh, also, you just got steamrolled by Nebraska. Um, you want to talk uh, DraftKings, and then I, I want to share um, OU's remaining schedule after that. You do that? Yeah. DraftKings Sportsbook. I mean, look, TD, Toddy. Todd. Taking it to the house. You understand what I'm saying? You're talking about touchdowns, I think. Whatever you call a touchdown, Dylan. They matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports book betting partner of the NFL. Are you ready to place your first NFL bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. We got a little action tonight. Who we got tonight? Oh, little Niners, little Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, you want to make it interesting? Hey, Rodgers back. I'm going to tell you a little something crazy. Niners by four. How about this, KJ? Christian McCaffrey to score a touchdown. Hmm. That's right. I'm not afraid to go there. And you could go there on the DraftKings Sportsbook. How about that? You want to do a touchdown dance of your own, Dylan? You want us to play your little rap song? Play that you play, pinned? Yeah. Give him a bar. I will give him a bar after this after mm-hmm. this read. Okay. Now check this out, KJ. You can score big with the DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code WASHED. That's code WASHED for new customers to get $250 in bonus bets. When you bet just five bucks and get one month of NFL Plus Premium, only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Now for the fine print, gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler in New York. Call eight seven seven eight Hope NY or text Hope NY four six seven three six nine. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call eight 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 seven eight nine seven 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 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. NFL Plus Premium offer available only to new and former NFL Plus subscribers. Additional NFL Plus Premium terms at nfl.com slash terms. All right, I want to I want to talk OU football real quick. Oh, here we go. Uh, they they won a they won a they squeaked past the zero and two Houston Cougars at home sixteen to twelve over the weekend. It was a little squeaker. It was a little squeaker. Home one at the time. Oh, it's fair. Right. <laughs> they were zero and one. Now they're zero and two because <laughs> OU did beat them. New coach. Um, to think that they kind of nudged Dylan Gabriel out the door to make room so their five-star redshirt freshman quarterback could take over is funny to me because, again, he's a redshirt freshman. Conventional wisdom says he's going to get better over these next few years. Uh, As it stands today, September 9th, 2024, he's terrible. Like, he's really, really bad. If you watch that game, 
He is incredibly inaccurate. He can't throw a deep ball to save his life. That offense is atrocious. The O-line is really bad. But the quarterback, he's just – he's terrible. And I say that because I want to point out the, the remaining schedule that they have. Are you ready? Okay. They play number seven, Tennessee, at home. It's a good game. They play number two, Texas, on a neutral field. Throw the records out. They play at number five, Ole Miss, at number six, Mizzou. They have number four, Alabama, at home. And finally, at number 16, LSU. They're not winning a single one of those games. Oh, they might, they might, oh, yes. they might drop a couple more beyond those games too. This is not a good football team. When, when do they get Arkansas? The defense, however, is pretty solid. It's a good defense. It's a good defense. The offense is atrocious. Speaking of Dylan Gabriel, worth noting, he is squeaked by. Yes, Idaho, Idaho, and a good Boise State team. A good Boise State team. I mean, he did, he did not look bad against Boise State, I don't think. But just worth noting, but yeah, he Dylan Gabriel is uh, is the uh, known commodity. Yeah, I mean, he, he's the reason that OU beat Texas last year. Yeah. Like, he, a good quarterback is, you know, it, it's always the – will pull you even with a good team if, you're, if, you're, if, if the pieces around you are not as good. Uh, Dylan Gabriel – was the key to them being a good football team last year. And they don't have him this year. And they replaced him with this kid, Jackson Arnold. Again, he's young. He's going to get better. And he has to because he's really bad right now. Okay. The equalizer is the, is the, the term I was looking for. It's – um, look, it's – they're not panicking in Norman right now. But, yeah, I, I knew they had a difficult schedule, like much more difficult than Texas – that is brutal. Those are six. Those are six <laughs> opponents coming up, and the worst one is ranked sixteen, and that's LSU. Wait, hold on. So that I understand, that's their like consecutive six. Or you're saying like over the course of the year they still have to play these teams over the course of the year. Yeah, I don't, okay. Those I aren't. Those aren't I'm like, oh shit. No. If that's like the next six games, that is just not okay. No, they they have <laughs> they have some 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 gimmies in between here and there. But okay. yeah, that that's a as brutal. I mean, Florida has a um, comparatively difficult schedule, I think. But oh, this yeah. this is this is as bad as it gets. Okay. And then then they're they're all catching OU at a tough at a tough year for them, I think. Does does OU make a bowl? You need you need six wins still to, to make a bowl game. <laughs> um, ooh, I don't know. I mean, it, there's six oh, there's six losses Tulane. right here. Two lanes. They got two lane. Oh, that was Tulane. Tulane. No, Tulane. Uh, Tulane was week one, I believe. They played them. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. They did not. They play. Uh, Temp- no, they played Temple. Tulane. They played Temple. Days. Yeah. They, Temple. Temple first, Houston, then Tulane. Tulane's no joke. Who? I just watched Tulane, and I can't remember the context of why I was rooting for or against them. It's Who the quarter- hell were they playing? It's their quarterback. The other opponents they have are Auburn, South Carolina, Maine, and and that's it. Yeah. Tulane, Tulane gave Kansas State everything they could handle. K State, that's why rated K, ranked K State is is why I was dialed in there. And then Darian we got the Menzo. very false report that somebody tried to compare them to. I won't even out them. You should out the them. most absurd text ever, saying I'm here to report that Tulane's quarterback is the next Patrick Mahomes. To which I watched minutes of the game, and I'm here to report that is not an accurate text. He, he's good. He is good. <laughs> Tulane is a good team. Uh, you could take Kansas State. You know that's a very that's a good program too. I mean, I I don't know about the next Pat Mahomes. I I was told that he was in Nebraska. Okay. Um, I'll say this really quickly. I know you. I know we've got three year three weeks for this to dial up in intensity. And I hope that Texas continues to handle all of their challenges as I see, I think every team across the country outside of Texas and Georgia has shown that like, Hey, uh, players can fuck up. (laughs) Shit can get real close when it shouldn't be. Um, so I hope Texas is still in that position when they play OU. I think Norman's going to be a challenge for them. I don't, I'm sorry. Um, Norman fucking a South Carolina Mm -hmm. is going to be a challenge. Like that's one that's going to be up there. They're looking at six and six. I, th- I think they surprise some people. Like I don't have the name, like fear of Ole Miss, Mizzou, LSU. Like I don't 
think just on paper those teams are automatic dubs. But I just we'll don't see. see how they can score with an offense like and those those offenses. We'll see. We I, I, I believe in Jackson Arnold. You're okay. gonna make me root for okay. Oklahoma. I don't know why I'm like a default anti Dylan. Uh, not anti you. You know that's not true, but. I don't know why I feel like I've got to take the opposing viewpoint. <laughs> hey, by all means, take it. It's a big, me problem. Big dog. Um, <laughs> last thing I'll say is I uh, had that old I-35 rivalry go down this weekend. Them old cats down San Marcos Way just took it to UTSA. Just uh, dumped them, man. Uh, Jeff Trailer squad. Jeff Trailer, great coach. It's a good program he's built down there. Could have been Baylor's coach. Um, that's right. Uh, T State is um, officially so we got a Thursday night game in San Marcos. I think A and M was flirting with uh, Jeff Trailer before they announced Elko. Yeah. Oh, A and M. I'm sorry, not Baylor. Yeah, because they never yeah. fired Aranda. It was it was A and M. I got them mixed up. Jeff Trailer's bigger. name was Shit. that was like for the he's, last three years. He's a name. He's yeah, like an up and coming guy, especially sure. yeah in Texas. Um, but yet yeah, T State is going to host. Arizona State Thursday night, and that is going to oh. be really fun because That's you've got badass. the two and O cats, and you've got Arizona State. Arizona State, who their running back went for like two hundred. They he went something. He ran crazy um, Saturday night. I didn't. I didn't watch Arizona State, but that's going to be a good game, and it's big because it's a Thursday night game. I don't know what Thursday night football looks like, but you're going to get people who aren't that familiar with Texas state um, watching and you're going to probably, you could see them go to three and O and that's when you start getting in the world of like, you know, getting some rankings, maybe sn sneak into the top 25. Uh, so Buffalo, that'll be Miami. Do what? Buffalo and Miami. Ah, oh. in the, NFL, oh. on the NFL side. So like, that's what they're up against. Like eh, an attractive game, but you know, I, I think people will still check out, uh, what call it? Uh, let's do the NFL. Let's do the NFL. But before we do, I wanted to give a shout out to um, our friends at BetterHelp. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. You know, kids are always learning and growing, but as adults, sometimes we lose that curiosity. Uh, what's something you'd like to learn? Maybe gardening, a new language, maybe how to finally beat your best friend in bowling. Not this guy. I'm, a, I'm not a good bowler. <laughs> I'm not. I just I've just given up. Maybe I need to try something new. And, you don't and give learn. good bowlers. So yeah, that makes sense. I thought you took I, a class. I did. I didn't. It didn't go well. Uh, shout out to Kyle Park. Therapy can help you reconnect with your sense of wonder because your back to school era. It can come at any age. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Try it out. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can even switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Therapy is great. I think we've all benefited from it in some capacity. Um, if you've never done it and you're curious, try BetterHelp. It's right there. It's easy online. How easy is that? Yeah, you're not going to regret trying therapy. I've been doing it for years now. And I always leave a session feeling much better than I did going in. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MuchDip today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash MuchDip. Let's talk NFL. Please. I love the NFL. Uh, <laughs> I don't have it on here, but I don't want to get lost in the fray. Did either of you peacock it on Friday? Is it somebody I who's dialed it. into a, uh, an embarrassing situation? I saw none of it. Dylan and I uh Will went Will came back mode. Yeah, Will came in clutch with the <laughs> with the login and it was I kept getting notifications that too many people were streaming Peacock, so I think <laughs> it kept kicking me off. But then I just like hit a button and it was like or I tried back and if like a, a few minutes later and uh, I was able to get back in. I got kicked off a couple of times though, but I did watch the majority of the Chiefs game. Yeah. And it was a great game. It was. It was totally worth it. Was it was an awesome game. Uh, my boy, Xavier Worthy. Can we talk about him for a sec? Three touches, <sighs> two of them touchdowns. Two tuds? One on an end around reverse. The other one on a, a busted play in the secondary. He went for 38. Happy for the kid, man. 
He looks he looks great. I forgot about the draft day uh, furor of uh, over like uh, the Chiefs getting him and the Bills like not. I, I forgot that the Bills had a chance to get him. Famously, uh, don't have a great wide receiver room, and now here we are with the Chiefs. Xavier they got Worthy. a good interviewer. I'm sorry, Keon. Whatever uh, gives great interviews. That's hell true. Of a, hell of an Ocho Cinco guy without the Hall of Fame uh, abilities. Keon Coleman. Well, maybe he's. I mean, he could be. He could be great. Yeah, I agree. I just, yeah, whatever. Um, yes. So I guess we should start with the Chiefs. I forgot that was Thursday. Um, we had a uh, quite a thrilling finish. Yeah, Isaiah likely dog. Is he? Did I you mean, end up picking him up? No. Well, I, not yet. I, we had a, the waiver hadn't hadn't processed yet. That that's like the ultimate like week one knee jerk like we'll gotta go get this fucking guy. right, and then he'll do nothing the rest of the season. But on a team that also has Mark Andrews, which is a premier tight end in the NFL, I mean this guy so was thought. like Lamar Jackson was looking for him at the end of the game. Yeah, and he was balling out. He was. Um, yeah, that was everything you could want for like the opening game. A toe. A toe. Mm. Yeah. That's a tough scene. Tough scene. Real Kevin Durant situation. Really was. Changed the course of Giannis's career. You know, I crazy. I love Lamar Jackson. I, I I think he's an excellent quarterback. He's he's playing in the AFC in, in, the, in the wrong era. That sucks. It sucks. I mean, he really is. It's a it's very uh very Phil Mickelson. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's just yeah. He's every year he's got to get past this team. He very has Charles to do Barkley, it, and it is d- very difficult to do. But was competitive. Yeah, he always is Had a, against this team. Well, yeah. Usually is against this team. Same can be said for Josh Allen. Yeah, um, both of those guys. Uh, but that was a really god damn. I just I don't want to miss anything. There's there's this is just such a packed weekend in the NFL. Um, on and off the field, huh? <laughs> the heck? Tyreek. Um, really quick, uh, the quick note that Andy Reid and John Harbaugh are the oldest coaches in the NFL now. Kind of blew my mind now that we don't have a uh, Seattle coach whose name is escaping me or Belichick. Pete Carroll. That were uh, Pete Carroll, like auspiciously over 70, like uh, Andy Reid at 66, John Harbaugh at 61. And then Jim at 60. That's kind of strange. Um, and then real quick to the Packers Eagles on Friday night. That was the Peacock game. That was the one that I saw very little of. But I saw a ton of reports that the field was absolute trash. Mm. What was the overall vibe of that game? I mean, we don't have to go into depth. John, Jordan Love's hurt, but he'll be back, blah, blah, blah. Was the field terrible? Yeah. There, early on, um, there was slipping on on almost every play. Yeah. It favors the offense too. So you would see a lot of big plays and you're just because all you you know, the if you even just throw like the 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 weakest of feints that you're gonna move one way, like the DBs have no chance. They're falling all over the place. The fact that there wasn't any more any catastrophic injuries than I know of is honestly a miracle. It looked like the turf needed to be cut. I mean, it was like it was long and players were slipping. It was it was not great. Yeah. Got it. I saw some comparisons to FedEx RG3 situation, and I'm like, I vividly remember how bad that was. Yeah. Um, when everybody's like arguing to have grass fields in the NFL the last couple of years, I'm like, uh, don't we recall that this shit gets fucked up too? Yeah. Um, so, okay. That's all I wanted to add there, but I also wanted to bring it up. So if we do talk Cowboys, uh, the thought of now the Eagles have Saquon Barkley and how comfortable does that make you? Uh curious um we could talk that he looked great yeah he looked great you have to wonder like i mean the knock on him is always can he be healthy for the entire season right but he did look great jalen hurts looked okay um looked bad at times got better as the game went on it's one week eagles do have just a ton of weapons though especially with saquon fair enough yeah so uh How much, uh, 
I don't know. The NFL just does not allow for the time for us to enjoy the Tyreek situation like we enjoyed the Scotty Scheffler one. Because yeah. there's a bunch of games, a bunch of stories, like there's a bunch of other shit going on. Well, that should have been massive. Well, they and they oh, the ten minutes later, Jerry's like, "Yeah, we're gonna just go ahead and sign Dak now." <laughs> it's like it just completely. <laughs> it was the most insane hour. Yeah, it was. It was like, oh yeah, that too. What was? Why was he detained? What did he do? Reckless think, driving. Reckless driving in his Lambo. I believe it was a Lambo. I saw that Which, the door, Doors were suey. Not, not How did suey. Claudius Those Lambo Campbell doors. Fit in there oh, with they him? Lambo? Suey's like the one to open up from the, the front. <laughs> oh, I just want to say suey. It's more fun. Yeah. Like this or like this? Like in a rolls. They open up from uh, like the back door. Oh, like this. Yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. I'm just <laughs> like fucking <this>. with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just okay. It's yeah, a visual so. podcast. This one opened like this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so ridiculous. Oh, the like Lambo not doors. Lambo before time. Back to the future doors. Ah, DeLorean. sure. A DeLorean or Lamborghini is probably what most people associate it with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they uh, they are the uh, the police officers are stating the the admit they are stating that uh, he has been he was uncooperative. I wish they would say he appeared un- uncooperative. One word could have made this so much more fun. Uh, yeah, again, I kind of hoped for and was wanting to see any of the body cam footage of Scotty Scheffler. And then we got it, and it was just sad because he was like visibly shook and or crying and frustrated and bothered by the whole situation, but wasn't coming off as an asshole. I'm just going to guess that Tyreek Hill was not in the same uh, you don't think he was reaction? super respectful to the police officers? <laughs> I need to see what he, what the driving, what was so reckless about the driving. Also, how was Drew Rosenhaus there within six minutes? He's he's the goat. He's the goat, dude. I mean, was he just walking along? Uh, I'm like, hey, that's there's my client. I, the- he lives in Miami, I assume. He did he chop her in? It's like he Miami's got there not so Madison. Fast. Like it's a big city. It's not easy to get around. Well, right. game day. Maybe maybe he lives in a neighborhood like KJ that just has a, oh. a runway in it for yeah. all the PJs. And he uh, hang glided from a drone. Yeah, he pa- he yeah he hang glided from a drone. Paradroned. <laughs> a paradrone. <laughs> no, he he was there, and he was noticed. People were talking about how noticeably sweaty he was, and I was just like, yeah, he's just he's in Miami, and his one of his biggest clients just. Yeah, they brought him in the stadium. I don't know if you saw. He did a um, like a pregame interview on the field with whoever was broadcasting the game. I don't remember. And he was talking about the incident and confirming that Tyreek was going to be playing. And he was just he was sweating bullets. It was really funny. Yeah, <laughs> he looked like a guy who who just worked out. Yeah, and showered real quick. He was like already a really late. hot shower, and then he ran out to his car, and it's already really hot, and he just continued sweating. It's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, and the humidity had not been lifted, and no. then they hit record. No, it was just sitting there. <laughs> like, I want to see five minutes before that rolled, because you know, Rose. They were probably like, "Hey, man, uh, I'm talking to the producers. I don't think we can do this interview." And he's like, "No, we're getting on air." Like, you, I guarantee they weren't like, "Hey, do you want to tell us about it?" Like, he was demanding that platform. It probably wasn't nice. Yeah, uh, I I don't know. I, I I the body cam footage will be very important here, but also like what did, he was on the ground. They had him on the ground. Yeah, like that's what. And that's I didn't where see you're like, Campbell anywhere, and he was there too. So I don't know how you get a six foot seven, six eight dude in that car, but he was also detained. Was he a passenger? Same incident. I believe so. Which again. I don't know how that happened because I didn't see him in any photos, but that's what was running last night. They were carpooling to the stadium. What's a, the what's a problem? Uh, <laughs> I'm saying like every image I've seen <laughs> is just of Tyreek. No, I know. I'm but kidding. But also I I'm saw kidding. that car and I'm like, how the hell do they fit? It's just it's just funny to imagine, you know, professional athletes carpooling on the way to a, one of their games. <laughs> hey, meet, meet me at the house. Yeah. I'll pick you up. Hey, man, you're five um, minutes late. That not is- the only wide receiver to play after a reckless driving charge, so, you know. Shout out to Rasheed Rice, SMU great for 130 yards and seven catches Thursday night. So, mm. 
guess it's a, uh, there would have been no grounds to suspend or delay Tyreek playing at that point. Yeah. Um, there were no, no one was hurt. Um, Rasheed Rice, a little different yeah, situation. Yeah. Nah, you know, we don't have to talk about it. Um, uh, no, this was that. Cowboys I don't know. Won. It looks, it looked, you look at it and you're like, well, this is excessive. I don't, you know, do you put somebody on the ground flat on their belly? It's like, what are you doing? Like, come on. Like, did he, did he, did, did he, you know, ball his fist? Did he go Arthur on him? Probably not. It's just excessive. Sir, you do have a track record. Well, okay. Of being black. Oh. Uh, For the podcast listeners won. at home, KJ said that, not not David Dillon. <laughs> Just wanna... Thank you. Uh, Cowboys won by a lot. I don't think that's as notable. Dad got paid. I think that's notable. But what the people only care about is that the official too much dip KJ Ellis's uh, line for Ezekiel <sighs> Elliott? That's what I thought. I touchdown thought. over under this year of 8.5 looks to be attainable. I don't think I made a big deal about it, but I had that number written down. 8.5 is my number. I'll I'm give you that. Strongly on the over. And nobody would have agreed until they saw him hurdle the first player on the first play. Of course, he, like the most <laughs> athletic play he will have all season gets called back for a home. <laughs> You're watching, you're like, oh, fuck, Zeke. And you're just like, ah, oh, it's going back. God damn it. He's been waiting all freaking off season for that one. Uh, You know what? He looked okay. He looked fine. Yeah. They didn't need much out of him, but, you know. The defense looked incredible. I don't know how much you, you can take from that, considering they played a pretty poor Browns offense. But Deshaun, poor Deshaun Watson, just, he was just running for his life. I think you could take. I don't think that you can acknowledge that the Cleveland's offense was in shambles going into the game, and also that the Cowboys had some some stuff on defense that's really really good to see. Like uh, Overshone appears to be shout out Demo <laughs> just as fast uh, post ACL, which is insane. He looked like he was shot out of a rocket when he when he ran down to Sean Watson. I that that took me. I was shocked by that. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, who, the new addition, the other linebacker from Minnesota, Kendricks. Mm -hmm. I mean, that dude just looks like he knows what he's doing, right place, right time kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, very deep at linebacker. The defense looks great. And that uh, Carson, the one who's filling in for Daron Bland on the other side of uh, the field is Diggs. Uh, he held his own. Remind me, is Bland done for the season? No, no, no. How long is he out? Four to six. Oh, okay, good. So, I don't know. Look, yeah, and you saw Dak, and you're like, well, how's this going to affect Dak? He just signed, like, this big deal, and now he's got to go play a game two hours later. And he had some really, really good throws. Offense was kind of weird in the second half. It's always weird when you have that big lead, and you're just trying to not fuck it up. And then you just end up kind of sitting there and settling for field goals. And ultimately, ultimately like, on paper, it looks like just an okay day, but – uh, I was I was happy with it, and I am also acknowledging that Deshaun Watson did not look like a, a starting quarterback in the NFL. No, he was he, he was missing a starting tackle who was lined up against the backup was lined up against Micah Parsons the entire game, basically. True, and they had no Nick Chubb. No so, Chubb, like that's worth noting. And they're no ten or eleven win team last year when they went through like quarterback hell. So I think that the Browns are okay. It was not their day. And then they lost David and Joku, which, you know, sucks for them. I don't care about the Browns, but like the Cowboys have uh, the Saints next week. And I think you're going to get two teams who may have like super high levels of confidence. And I have no idea where to place them. The Cowboys are really good. Legitimately. The Saints played the most embarrassing team in the NFL right now. So I don't know what it's going to look like next week, but I think it's going to be a lot of hype going into it, and maybe the Cowboys just control it the entire way. We get a ton of Zeke next week. I'm taking the over. I'm riding with you, KJ. Of eight and a half? Eight and a half for Zeke. Book it. Did you see? I just want to say healthy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Did you see he, he was requesting to be to be fed on like his second carry? <laughs> He's had enough to eat. He's so back. Dude, he's so back. Best shape of his life, too. Oh, uh, Rams-Lions. <laughs> did y'all catch the whole Rams-Lions game? Yeah. Didn't catch that one. Oh, it's a good game. 
Good game. It was fun. Uh, you had OT and the the Lions just ran the ball like six straight times, like just a, the most aggressive, egregious run it down your throat I've ever seen. And you're like, oh shit, that was fucking, that was pretty dope. That was pretty dope. That was very, the most Dan Campbell way for that game to end. It was a very fun game where both teams made a bunch of small errors and never really looked in control. Um, I don't know, like driving a very fast car, but like you don't know how to drive it yet. Neither team like wrecked and screwed it up. They were just trying to keep it between the lines and neither team was doing very good at it until that overtime drive. But it was enjoyable. Uh, I will add two like related, but not like game related things. I complain. We complain. A lot of people complain. Every time the Cowboys are on national TV, especially Sunday night football, you get one mandatory shot, maybe two when they're outside the stadium or other parts of the stadium, one is of the artwork around the stadium. It's so tired at this point, 20 years later. And another is of like downtown Fort Worth or in the stockyards or like the, the bulls in downtown Dallas. Like they're not showing the highlights of Arlington, two big gripes that most people around the country have. They showed like a slow-mo still shot or slow-mo drone shot of like downtown Detroit. It looked absolutely dope like coming out of halftime and it was like 45 seconds long while they were running the stats of the game uh just going on in the background i'm like oh shit detroit looked awesome more teams need to have that and then major shouts to sunday scaries in the detroit lions one of the dopest things i've seen sometime if you haven't seen it go to instagram check out sunday scaries uh and their recent collab with the lions as uh will may have abandoned his college football team but uh, he kept it correct in the NFL, and that was cool to see. They need to send him a uh, David Montgomery jersey or something. Dan Campbell fucking headshot or something. You think Aiden Dan Campbell is what he needs? You think Dan Campbell's uh, really up on Instagram? <laughs> He's <laughs> just a profile photo of Dan Campbell's all I need, like visual motivation throughout the day. Like you can't be fucking around, and Dan Campbell's like over your shoulder looking at you. If you're listening, Lions, we would we would definitely take a studio sponsorship, uh, the Dan Campbell Studios. We would just call it Dan Campbell because there's a cowboy tie-in too. It was a tight end here. So we could make that happen, make it work for everybody. All right. Uh, oh, hey, one other thing, not NFL-related. Uh, if you're a fan of the SEC, Alabama, you got a quarterback coming your way next year out of Duncanville, Texas, Keelan Russell. Five tuds. Oh. Five touchdowns Committed? against South Oak Cliff, a good South Oak Cliff team. So, just want to say this kid is, this kid's good. Watched, uh, Didn't I watched know he was going there. A lot of highlights there. He's, he's legit. You're gonna love him. So, check as that is Decorian out. Moore. So, shout out to Texas, because uh, or no, that he's going to LSU. Oregon, uh, Texas Oregon. is getting. Oh, or I is he where you been, thing. dog? Well, we talked about that decommitment. I forgot about all this. Like or, that's two different decommits. But I don't really agree. Maybe de- it doesn't go through. Does DeCorey Moore see kind of Oregon kind of struggling and maybe say, you know what? I don't know. Does anybody want a five-star? I don't know, Consensus baby. number one wide receiver. Does anybody want me? That's what I would yep. be saying. Texas is filling up a wide receiver. Okay. Well, he's like, oh, fine. I'll take my talents to Norman. <laughs> or, or Waco. Or Waco. I doubt that doesn't seem right. <laughs> Gave all our money to the quarterback. They've, they've done their Daquan experience. I don't see them going back. Oh, okay. Um, I see what you did there. <laughs> all right. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Of course, the segment during which we talk about what we already talked about. Uh, we might still get wet later this year, says Dave. KJ can't wear a medium hoodie, but he can F with an L. Okay. Texas has the Arkansas Jaquindans on the schedule. Cam Rising has a finger thing. ASU's running back ran crazy. Dave doesn't give good bowler. Much dip. Lambo doors open up, whereas Suey doors open at the middle. And finally, maybe Drew Rosenhaus lives in a KJ neighborhood. And that concludes Run It Back. Maybe. Much dip. Much dip. <laughs> All right. Fun that was, show. That was a good one. We'll, uh, Bye, KJ. See you next week. Later. Bye.